Hi, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today, we are going to read Krishna City's beautiful poem, Aphil, a most compelling religious poem on the aftermath or the vision of death and the abode of God after a journey of life ends into the death. As you all know, Christiana Rossetti is a religious poet, a painter, as well as a pen pictorial quality in her writing or in her vision of mother and sister duo, that is um, his brother Gabriel and she, Christiana Rossetti, uh, had been the formation of pre applied brotherhood. The pre applied brotherhood is the quality of uh, expressing true pictorial quality of their dreams, of their desires. Most of these theories or themes of their poetry and writing as well as painting is religious, but sometimes these religious uh, themes also transgress into other visions of expressing desires and all such things. So in their quality or in their expressions, uh, the element of element of religious sentiments everything is being portrayed through a pictorial uh, description minute details of the pictures so in christian arosity we will find a poetry the lines that goes through in four or five stanzas but this poem is more a picture drawn uh, rather than words so this poem can be treated as a statement or a religious statement that has been stated through pictorial quality. So, in Christiana Rossetti's this particular uphill poem, which is a series of questionnaires and answers, is a beautiful pictorial description of poet's vision of death and the vision of God, as well as the abode and the judgment of life. The very judgment of uh, life and the very understanding of the aftermath of life, so the vision of heaven and hell, uh, those ideas that pop up in this uh, discussion uh, mostly transgress a few of the ideals or ideas that has been stated in Christian elements. So not all of the Christian elements are here minutely depicted, rather Rosidi has uh, has uh, diverted from the um, way of Christian understanding of heaven. Uh, she welcomes everybody. She states that in, in heaven, uh, the door is open for all. So it is not sought for any sinners too. So these are the elements or these are the ideas which is quite non-Christian. But it is a very beautiful poem and the poem states the poet's own personal vision of the abode of God the very heaven. In many of the religious poems, uh, mostly in Emily Dickinson or in the in Vaughan's poetry, in in Wordsworthian poetry, the abode of God or the judgment, the final judgment, and the uh, very ideology or who can have the access of hell who can have the access of heaven or the punishment or all such things has been the christian ideology and it has been defined it has been discussed in several of the poems several of the ways in 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 the vision of judgment in the vision of uh, ideologies in the vision where uh, the formation of heaven or hell, the the geographical or is it an imaginary location, imaginary location and that has been pop up in discussion in several of the sonnets of Shakespeare too. In Milton particularly where we can find in Paradise Lost the vivid description of the hell and heaven. So all of the Christian lines of thinking and, and a quite personal way of making that Christian ideologies in his own, own terms, in its own ideologies ideology in its own understanding has been the very uh, pivotal point of judgment while we understand this particular poem, Aphil. 
सो इट इज़ बेटर टू अंडरस्टैंड द पोइट्स ओन विजन ऑफ जजमेंट और रेदर हर आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ हाउ टू मेक दिस लाइफ ब्यूटीफुल एंड हु द गॉड इज ऑन द वेरी आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ गॉड एंड ही एंड ही इज अबाउट ऑफ हेवन सो वेरी परफेक्शन और द वेरी आइडियोलॉजीज और द वेरी पिक्टोरियल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दैट अबाउट ऑफ गॉड इज बींग डिपिक्टेड हेयर सो we can find out a beautiful soothing picture here in this poem apil so let's move into our text and start reading this poem and decipher its meaning as i have told you that this particular poem is a series of questionnaires and self style answered so these questions and answers obviously the questions of common man and the answers are personal one so each and every person can have this poem and ask herself or himself the very questions about god very questions about about of god many of us might find the same answers and many of us might find uh, many different answers in terms of defining religion be it christian be it islam be it hindu or be it other religion each and every person has its own religion in its truest indian term truest vedic term which is uh, the religion which one can possess dharma uh, the religion or the uh, perfection of one's ideology or the abode or the understanding of his own soul own persona is the very understanding the vision of god the vision of god's home the poem begins in a series of questions as it states does the road wind appeal all the way the first question says it's an imagery where the journey has been called or the journey to abode of god is like that of a uphill journey a journey towards mountain at top of the mountain there is the abode of god that is the perfect picture that the poet has has drawn in these lines now the question is there as it as she starts as she sets forth her journey towards the god does the road wind uphill all the way the simple question is that is this road leads to the god it is this road leads to the abode of god yes to the very end the answer is given that this road leads to the abode of god in fact what is this road this is the way of our living way of our lives in fact as we are born the path is paved and in this paved way we are leading our uh, lives in the name of living and at the end when we will die we will meet the abode of god or we will enter into the god's home will the day's journey take the whole long day here the hyper pattern is that is this the journey uh, is this Uh, the long day or is this the journey long now uh, obviously it is a long journey so the long the very epithet has been transferred from its journey to the day so day's journey as have been as it has been stated in this line a journey from morning to night has been stated our journey from life to death from birth to death so Uh, a full day is the full circle of living uh, is this journey takes a whole long day yes the answer is given from morning to night my friend now the answer has been it might be the very door keeper it might be the very only the angel of god who is answering all these questions or the angel who is residing uh, in everybody's heart it's replying that and Uh, welcoming uh, the parts and welcoming the question as all the questioning parts and as my friend that yes this is the journey from morning to night from day beginning to day end from birth to death in the second stanza it states but is there for the night a resting place the life we are leading or the earthly life or uh, the life that we call living is full of worldly hustles and bustles 
full of busy, full of materialistic gains, losses, full of calculations. Now, after all of these calculations, after all of these rushes, after all of these hustles and bustles, the poet is tired and she is questioning, is there any resting place nearby or is there any resting place at the abode of God? A roof for when the slow dark hours begin, may not the darkness hide it from my face. You cannot miss the inn. So atop of the abode of God, there is an inn. The inn is the very reference of God's abode, that is the uh, paradise. So in that paradise, when the dark slow hours begin, so dark slow dark hours means when the death is approaching, when minute by minute, inch by inch, one is approaching towards grave, one is losing its physical entity and dying. And at that time, when may not the darkness hide it from my face, when there should be darkness in front of me, when I will be incapable of seeing in front of me, when I will be incapable of seeing the vision, the very front of me, when there should be absolute darkness, when there should be the evening, when there should be the end of my life, will there be my vision intact to see that in that abode of God? Will I be capable of seeing that abode of God, that resting place which is here in reference called the inn? The question answered as you cannot miss, cannot that. miss that inn. One who is atop at the abode of God and who is at the evening time losing his physical entity and entering into the abode of God in the name of passing this fleshy earthly tent of body and living into the entity of soul and uniting with that of God's abode. Will I miss that in? The answer is that you cannot miss that in. One is obviously find out the abode of God and there is a sure shot. One cannot miss that abode of in. As in our Vedic culture, as in our Vedic tradition, we, uh, the body is always transforming our fleshy dresses several times, but it is the soul which is undying. And after our death, it unites with God. There is an everlasting fire. The same sort of ideology has been referred in Christian ideologies too. And here also, there is an abode of God. In that abode of God, each and every soul has the permission to enter and rest there. Shall I meet other wayfarers at night? The time we rest, we sojourns in our earthly days, in our earthly days, in our earthly place, in our earthly belongings, in our earthly relationship, we cannot shrug off all this. We cannot said all this instantly. Even though we die, even the vision of death is there, the poet having that willingness to meet of God, will she be able to meet all her friends, all her relations? Now the question is there and the answer is given those who have gone before. Yes, you are entitled to meet all of the friends, all of the relations who has just entered into the abode of God and en route death, en route dying. Those who have embraced death, who are no more alive, can have the abode of God resting. And in that abode of God, you can meet all of the relations, all of the friends there. Then must I knock or call when just inside? We just at the entrance, will I have to knock? Will I have to call that God, I have come here? Just make an entrance of me. Now, the answer is that they will not keep you standing at that door. There is no waiting. There is nothing that sort of waiting a punishment in these earthly ways. In the earthly ways, waiting had been the greatest punishment of human being. Wait, wait every time. We waited for perfect moment. We waited for perfect place. We waited for perfect execution. And that waiting is a kind of punishment in our earthly existence. But such a waiting is not a punishment in the abode of God. As soon as you come there, 
as soon as you reach there there is a welcoming note from the god sent and you will be instantly in in that in in that abod of god shall i find comfort travel so and week that's a long journey from life to death i am travel so i'm tired of traveling i am weak in my persona as i am aging towards that death i have to toil much of the physical exhaustion now is there a resting place for me in that inn will i have all the comforts that are entirely what sort of labor should i what sort of rest will i get in that abod of god the answer it gives of labor you shall find the sum the sum total of the labor you have toiled from your life from your birth to death will be the comfort equal so the equality equality is in terms of your labor that you have exhausted that you have exhibited in your earthly life so all of the toils all of the um, discomforts that you have gone through in this world in this earthly existence would be remedied will be equalized will be equalized by the very comforts at the abode of in so if you were tired if you were exhausted if you were having such discomfort in your earthly existence you will be equally comforted at the abode of god so how welcoming a place that abode of god is will there be beds for me and all who seek now there comes a christian elements these christian elements has been confronted here in this line even though the reference is from gospel saint matthew is there beds for me and for all who are coming even the sinners are allowed here even who are uh, coming here will not be judged according to the um, principles of doing good works and bad works will there be sinners punishment will there be welcoming notes for everybody is there democratized yeah bed for all who come now here the rosidi says here is bed for everybody whoever comes there is no disparity there is no inequality among these knockers who come in in search of peace in search of unity in search of everlasting abode everlasting placement everlasting dwelling the sojourns of these worldly lives are short lived and thereby in the abode of god there is a lasting peace for everybody even the sinners are welcome here so the sinners are also the son of god and most welcome so in this last few lines there is a, a christian elements confronted and and the rosidi's own welcoming notes is that that everybody is most welcome in the abode of god and there is there is equality in terms of uh, the blessings and love from god apart from religious sentiments you will find in this poem a beautiful pictorial quality of the abode of god it is like that of a mountain journey and at top there is abode of god so this uh, pen pictorial quality is brief light references and the beautification of painting so here is a piece of poetry which is better written or painted through words so if you have any doubts regarding understanding this poem you can just pop up any question i will try my best to answer like share comment and obviously subscribe bye bye